Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about hot reloading your Swift UI apps in the simulator. The Swift Canvas is great as you can get to see the changes in the UI when you make them in your code. This is not always optimal, however, and sometimes those previews fail and you have to launch your app to run the simulator to see what's really going on. Wouldn't it be great if Xcode supported hot reloading in the simulator so that you could make changes to the code of your running application? and see those changes reflected in the simulator? Hot reloading is about getting rid of compiling your whole application and avoiding the deploy restart cycles as much as possible, while allowing you to edit your running application code and see changes reflected immediately. Well, thanks to Christoph Zablocki and his inject package and the inject for Xcode, it is definitely possible. I came across Christoph's blog post recently that documents this. And since I'm more of a visual kind of guy, I thought that I'd put together a quick tutorial video that walks you through this process. I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description below. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. In this video, my focus is on Swift UI projects, but Christoph's article also shows you how to implement it in UIKit. And you can do this with any one of your projects. I have an old sample project that I'm going to be using in this video. First, let's visit the GitHub repo for the inject package. In the README, there's a description about how to add this to your project. The heavy lifting, as Christoph says, is done by inject for Xcode. So let's check that repo out first. If you read the README file here, you'll see that there is a stop press section at the top that mentions a hot reloading project, which says it's now available as a Swift package. The link to that repo shows you how to implement it that way. And I've tried that, and it worked but it requires the installation of a second Swift package to your projects, and you have to remember not to release your app with the package configured. So instead, I've reverted back to just using Christoph's package and following his guidelines. So let's go. If we turn to Christoph's repo, he provides us with those instructions. The first thing we need to do is to download and install the latest version of Xcode injection from the GitHub page. I'm going to choose this compiled app version. With it decompressed, I can move it into my Applications folder and launch it. It has to be running for Xcode to use it. And what it is is a menu bar app. For the most part, you don't have to worry about what these menu options are, except that you'll need to make sure that the file watcher is enabled. And as you'll see, to make sure that it's watching your project directory, but more about that in a minute. With the injection application running, you can configure any Xcode project to use it. The first thing you need to do is to install the Swift package. And that's the same URL as the GitHub repo. So I'm gonna copy it from here, and go back to my Xcode application, and I can install the Swift package by choosing Add Package from the File menu and paste that URL in the search field. And then I can add the inject package. Once it's been added, you must do one more thing. You have to add a string to the other linker flags of all targets for your project for the debug configuration. So I can copy that string from the GitHub repo. And then in Xcode, I can select my target, and then the build settings, and I like to just search for other linker flags. Once it's filtered, I can drop down that section. And then in the debug line, I'll just paste in that string. Back on the instructions now, I'll need to import inject, and I'll need this line here, the observed object creating this private var that's the inject observer. So let me return to Xcode, and first I will import inject. 
And then I'm going to add that observed object. Back in the instructions, it says I need one more thing. I need to add enable injection at the end of the body definition. So let's do that. Now the nice thing about this is that you don't need to remove this code when you're done. It's a no-op in production builds. If the injects for Xcode menu bar is running and you've installed the Swift package and configured the views accordingly, you can just run your Xcode project. The first time you do so, you'll be asked to select the project directory. This is the directory containing your Xcode proj or workspace proj file. Then when you do that, you'll see the injection app is connected and it's watching files in that specified directory. Now, with the app still running, you can make modifications to your code. And then when you click on the simulator, you'll see those changes instantly take place. All without having to recompile and build again, the app still running. For example, let me just comment out this code. Fantastic. Lots of opportunities here. The console of the running app shows you what directory the injection app is monitoring. And if this is a top level directory where there are more applications at that same level, all of the views that you've added the injection configuration to will be monitored for those projects. In my case, though, I haven't done that. I'm only monitoring that single project. If I want to add another path, because I have another application open, I can just return to the menu bar app and choose add a directory. That's all there is to it. I know I'm going to be using this a lot, particularly in those cases when the Swift UI preview is acting up or if I simply can't configure it properly. That happens.